All right, so uh, what's your name and where are you from, man? David Rocha, man. I'm from Northern California, originally from Tracy. Right now I'm in Stockton, which is the, just the next town over. But it's basically, I'm about an hour uh, east of San Francisco. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. You said you've done some time uh, in some pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty uh, known prisons. Um, I had a, a eight year federal prison sentence. I was sentenced in Sacramento County jail. I was fighting a Rico up in San Francisco. And, um, basically it was a, it was two sentences. One, one, one of them was seven and a half years. The other one was a year and a half, but, uh, one of those years was concurrent. So it bumped my seven and a half to eight years. And I ended up serving six years out of that. Cause you do 85% in the feds. Yeah. Okay. So you did fed time. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what prisons did you go to during this fed time? Well, first off, did how does that work when you get fed time in California? I know over here, when you first initially get charged with stuff in Virginia, even yeah. though you're doing fed time, you you have to go to city jail and stuff like yeah. that. Did you, do you all have to do it like that as well, or do they have their own federal jails before you go to prison? Yeah, no, it, it's cheaper for the feds to just contract local county jails to hold their federal inmates. Okay. So they, that's the way they do it because can you imagine the money they they have you know having their own facility? So uh, the county jails they like having federal inmates because I, I believe the feds pay them twice as much than what they're getting for their exactly. own. Exactly, they do, yeah. especially over here and uh, you know some of the federal inmates that are housed in the jail. They they yeah. automatically get bottom bunks. Uh, they don't have they're not allowed to sleep on the floor and it's crazy because that stuff has started fights in the jail because. Federal yeah. inmates are getting catered to more than others, but uh, that's another story for another day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But how was the county? What 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 county jail did you go to? How was that? Um, I went to Sacramento County Jail at first, and um, we supposedly federal in a uh, federal uh, holding are supposed to be separate, have their own pod and whatnot. We're all mixed with everybody else. Uh huh. You know, so you're right. It, it does uh, create an interesting atmosphere. Yeah. You know, because a lot of the guys that are doing county time, they're just coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. And the feds, man, they take forever, man. You, you'll go to court just to know that somebody went on vacation and then they'll set it off for four months later. Yeah. So it's easy to go and have five court dates that stretches a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's basically in Sacramento. I was there for... 15 months yeah um and then i was actually sentenced after 12 months but i waited three months for the marshals to get me yeah was the jail and, pretty and, rough um i think just about as rough as any jail you know um i was in an active pod okay which was, which was a problem because in an active pod i don't know how it is over there but over here in california uh, like I'm, I'm Mexican, man. So automatically you're going to be North or South. Yeah. You know, and the fact that it was during this time, this is my third incarceration. It was during this time in solitary where I just like, I was just tired of, of the way I was living. I couldn't change. And that's basically when I cried out to God, I'm like, I need to change because I, I can't do it. I yeah. can't. You know? So it was this term that I accepted Christ and of course, I'm in an active pod, man, because that created problems. Yeah. You know, created problems because um, you, if you're in an active pod, you got to be functioning. Okay. You know? Now, and, explain explain to the viewers exactly what an active pod is. I'm, I'm sure I yeah. kind of have an idea about what it is. You were affiliated yeah. with some kind of group, and I don't want uh, you speaking yeah. about it if you don't feel. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what it's like over there, but in California, if, if you are, I grew up in Tracy, California, which is up north. That automatically, if, if you were going to be a gangster, basically, um, you are automatically a part of this huge group, you know, that that is, and I don't want to talk too much about it either. You you're know, good, you're good. It's a huge network that um, regardless of the fact, if you grow up there, you're automatically, in a sense, a part of this, whether you like it or not, once you get locked up. Uh-huh. You know, so then it goes higher and higher into basically, I mean, just mafia stuff, you know, but uh, an active pod, meaning you are a functioning gang member of this group that is 
covering from the entire Bay Area, Central Valley, everything. And if you go against that, there's going to be an issue and a problem. Okay. The only other option is to to PC up. Uh, and that, you already know, I mean, you know what that is. Yeah. To just basically roll it up. And after that, I mean, you're just, you're no good. That'll, that'll follow you through your whole term. That'll follow you when you get back home. If you're going to go back and live where you came from, it's going to be a problem. So you said... You gave your life to Christ from your third go round, and it was in this county jail that you gave your life to Christ. Yeah. And I mean, um, how I I'm, I can't wait to hear your story. You gave me a rough draft of it, man. It's yeah. an amazing story, and it yeah. takes place in prison. But I'm just trying to figure out: Did you start having problems in county before you went to the federal prisons because you yeah. gave your life to Christ? Yeah, yeah. There was issues because what happened was. Um, I was a trustee in my pod and being a trustee, your, your cell door was never locked, man. Can you imagine this? <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> pe sometimes people want them doors to lock. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is I could use the phones when, when it was, when everybody else was locked in, it was me and my cellie. We could use the phones when people, everyone else is locked in. We could take a shower when everybody else is locked in instead of, so, I mean, that was huge. All we had to do was mop the place, clean the showers, uh, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We gave the trays out. But other than that, we were free, man. Yeah. So, basically, um, it started becoming a problem because I started giving Bible studies. You know, because you know, man, a lot of guys in jail read their Bibles. That's a normal thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially in county jail when you're facing time. Yeah. You're scared, you're nervous, you want some kind of comfort. So, it's normal to read your Bible. But the problem was I started reading it out in the day room. And and so homeboys would come and 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 they said, What are you doing, man? I saw him just study. Oh, can I study with you? And it became this like three, four, five guys, and then it became an issue to the shot talk. Because basically he said, Listen, man, what you're doing is is you're spreading poison. You know, because up up here, um, northerners are outnumbered. In, in almost every state prison up here by the Southsiders. Uh -huh. So when there's 200 of them, there'd be like 30 or 40 Northerners on the, on the yard. So basically by me spreading poison and having people come to Christ, they were dropping that stuff and that spreads poison to the cause. Yeah, lowers their numbers. They need, they need the numbers, bro. They need the numbers, you know? So basically I was told not to give Bible studies um, and I, I, I I said, I'm not going to stop, man. Yeah. I'm not going to stop. This is the choice I made. And, and I understand the repercussions of this, you know, but this is who I am now. You know, this is, this is who I am. And I wanted to go full hard because you already know, man, in there, at least over here, um, you can't play the Christian card because a lot of people hide behind the Bible in prison. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It happens a lot, you know, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it's like that where, where the place you've been that when you're for real, for real about it, yeah. People respect it. They do. They and I try saying this all the time, but people do not understand what I'm what I'm saying. Uh, for some reason, when you are really into the word of God and you are really doing everything, living it, you know, people can sense it and they respect it, man. Just like yeah. a Muslim doing his thing, you know. Yeah. And you said something that was very powerful, man, that I couldn't put it in better words. Uh especially for people that's affiliated with some kind of organization, gangs, whatever. They say that becoming a Christian is the safe route. But yeah. it's it's not so safe when you're affiliated and you're trying to change yeah. away from it. It's even more dangerous, you know? It's yeah. even more dangerous as, as to if you were to stay with that organization. And that yeah. is something that a lot of people do not understand that you can die behind a, your your religious belief. You yeah, know? yeah. But uh, yeah. So so going from county to federal jail. Let's hear this story, man. A, a federal prison. Let's hear this. Yeah. This is amazing story, man. Yeah. Well, for, first of all, um, my charges were were meth sales. Um, it was already my third my third felony for uh -huh. meth sales. Um, because um, I didn't even mention it to you, man. Because I didn't. I just, I was trying to write an email to you to get your attention because I don't know how much emails you get. Yeah, I that's get a lot. Good. I get a lot. Exactly. That's why I put RICO charges. Yeah. 
you know, because I figured that got, got that'll catch your attention. It did, it did, <laughs> it, and it was all capitalized. I tried telling people to capitalize it, if, yeah. you know, get to the point in the title of the email, and that helps a lot for me to see it. But yeah, yeah. so I did get hit with RICO charges. Um, I didn't even mention it to you, but I used to be a recording artist, man. I was a rapper before. Really? And, um, I used to sell. I mean, I, I would tour the whole United States. You know what I mean? And um, basically, like up up this way, I was probably like the one of the most popular Latino rappers there was. Really? And because of that, because of the music industry and the way the mob is up here, it's like entertainment and mob has always, you know what hand I mean? Hand in hand. Yeah, exactly. Because of the respect that it brought, it, it brought me close to a lot of people that were very powerful. Yeah. So what happened was the feds were doing this huge thing. This, they were building a racketeer, you know, Rico, Rico uh, case. Hey, but before before you keep going, what was your rap name? I know you had a rap name, man. Uh, Sir Dino. Sir Dino. Yeah. Dino. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> and it's funny because you're gonna. If I would have told you, you're gonna find out once you put this video out, because people people know about the music, man. Okay. You know. So, anyways, uh, uh, they they built this huge case that actually it's a uh, gangland made made a a uh, an episode about the case I was in. Really? Yeah. So the gangland show, if you look it up, I'm not sure what it was called. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, but they built this Rico case and they arrested like people from Pelican Bay, which is, which is like the main prison in California. That's like, like, you know, lockdown Yeah. all the way down to the street level, you know, from these generals to captains to soldiers. And, and I got caught up in this Rico really? this racketeering thing, man. It was insane, you know? Um, and that's what started this whole thing. And while I was fighting a Rico case, I got bonded, which in the feds is basically, I, I was able to, to bail out without putting money it's, it's called a bond you yeah, know yeah and i was able to do that and i fought that rico case for two and a half years and like a big dummy i sold dope while on federal bond <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. yeah they're probably watching you man as soon as you left of, that thing of course man yeah. of course you know yeah. but the life you know what i mean you're in that life dude life is just it's all you know man yeah it's, it's just crazy it's it's, it's a I've always described it like a, a roller coaster that just doesn't stop. It just goes faster and faster. And you can't get off this thing. Yeah. You know, I, I was gangbanging. I was selling dope. I was selling music. I was doing movies. We had five movies at that time that hit blockbuster video, Hollywood video. So I was in the mix. Yeah. You know, and then I get hit with this thing and, and then I get bonded out and I'm fighting my case. So it was crazy because most of the other defendants were already in prison. So there was no bond for them. Yeah. You know? And uh, but every time I come to court, I'm sitting with these guys. They're all they're all in their jumpsuits, and I'm sitting in regular clothes. Yeah. You know, which was a big deal, man. Because as you know, um, a lot of times when 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 co-defendants get separated, it's because somebody's telling. Yeah, and they see you in street clothes. They're probably thinking one thing. You know. Well, actually, they were cool because I was showing up with them. Uh huh. Every time they had a court case, a court date, I was there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was actually, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's a good sign because the second somebody is telling, they start separating you and you no longer have court with those people anymore. Yeah. So because I fought the case with them, um, they were super cool with me, man. Even though I wasn't involved in that, they knew I was just a rapper. Yeah. I mean, I was out here gangbanging and selling dope, but I was nowhere near some of this crazy stuff, you know? Uh-huh. But I mean, it, it was it was it was a crazy time, man. It was a crazy time. So while on bond, I get busted selling dope. This dude, he was a friend of mine for a long time. He was kids and he was wife, and and he basically was wearing a wire. Dang. Yeah. That's so sick. I got caught up, and that's why I went to Sacramento County to fight my drug case. You know. So because of that, and because of the RICO thing, because in federal. The federal has these things called federal guidelines. It's basically like a multiplication table. You know, at that time, um, things are a little different now, but they would give you time to like, okay, you have this much dope. This is your criminal history. Yeah. That's how much time you're doing. And that's yeah. it. You're hit. Yeah. So that's why in the feds, you know, when somebody has, when somebody's telling, because it's federal guidelines. They break the guidelines when it comes to sentencing. 
Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my guideline landed me at five years, but they hit me with eight because I was on bond. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So if I would have just caught a regular drug case for because it was just a small amount of meth that I would have got because they go by months. I don't forget what five years is or sixty. Is it sixty months? Yeah. Yeah. The, the feds around 60. here go by months. Yeah. Yeah, I would have gotten 60 months, but because I was on federal bond and I did this crime while on federal bond, they hit me with three more. Mm. So I got an eight-year sentence, basically. Damn. After that, after Sacramento County Jail, I was in, I was, I stayed, man, I stayed in general population and active part, and I just continued to give Bible studies. Um, dudes came up in my cell and tried jumping me, actually, and I still refused to leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your own dudes, what, Northerners? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about Southerners? Were they uh, any mad about what you were doing in any way? They were. They were in a whole other part of the jail. They. Oh yeah, that's right. They separated them. Okay. Okay. You only saw them like during court, and even then they kept you in separate holding cells. Okay. Now, were there any uh, other races in there with y'all? Yeah. Yeah. And that's who basically, because anybody that sat with me would get jumped if they were part of what I was. <laughs> So Damn. they left me after a while, bro. They left me alone. They're like, "This dude's crazy." Yeah. Like they can't, we, they they can't get rid of me because I I would refuse to roll it up. And I'm not saying that's good for everyone because honestly, there's some Christians, man. They get stabbed. They get killed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I not saying. I yeah. say that all the time, man. You know, you yeah. got to know know what's going on around you because sometimes you got to get out of there, man. Yeah. Or else you're yeah. gonna die. And if you don't know exactly know what the water is like for you yeah uh man you're taking a huge risk you know i'm yeah, sure so you got common sense i'm sure you knew that your life probably wasn't fully at stake at the time you know what i mean yeah yeah exactly because i would never want somebody to watch your video become a christian go to prison and just stand his ground and get killed you know what yeah. I mean? so uh, you got to be careful in what you're at where you're at because um like you go to a level four and and if you if for whatever reason, you know what I mean? You're going to get killed. You know what I mean? So yeah. this was county jail. I mean, I just, I, I, I you know, I, I threw my dice in the, and then I thought, I'm going to stay here. I'm not PCing up. I'm going to stay here. You know what I mean? I'm going to serve God. I'm going to stay here. Matter of fact, you need God too. And I just became this insane dude in there. They were just like, they were jumping people that were sitting with me to Bible study, but they just left me alone. <laughs> Um, but other races, crazy man, was, as hell, man. Yeah, I was giving Bible study. There was those like vices, you know, vices like Mexican dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Asian dudes, black dudes, white dudes. So I, I had a nice little group, and because it's county jail, people cycle in and out. You know what I mean? So I was just kind of there uh, giving Bible studies until I got sentenced. Yeah. When I got sentenced, and the feds picked me up, the marshals picked me up. Then I had to face my judge that gave me bond in San Francisco. Uh huh. So that was a whole other jail and because that was where my rico case was that anybody that belonged to that rico case um, was automatically solitary confinement okay like you can these these dudes were shot callers there was no way they were going to let these dudes loose and because i was part of this rico they put me in solitary and i remember writing grievances i'm like what am i doing in solitary man i don't want to be in solitary i was in general population in sacramento let me be in general population here uh-huh like man you you're you were a high profile case like my the case was in the newspapers it was in even maxim magazine i don't even know if maxim magazine is around anymore but even at that time maxim magazine wrote a piece on this uh, on this case newspaper all the san francisco chronicle san jose mercury sacramento i mean all of them talking about this case there's no way they're going to put any of us in in in, in a regular population uh-huh so that's where I was. I ended up spending a year in solitary fighting that case there. Okay. Which was not even fighting it. I was just trying to get sentenced. But the feds, man, they, they just, it's slow moving. Yeah. You know, by this time, I'm, it's, I'm already, what, 15, over a little over two years in, in county. And by this time, you just want to go to prison already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because a lot of dudes, man, a lot of dudes think that, no, oh, I don't want to go to prison. No, man, you don't want to sit in county. Yeah, I'd rather be in a prison yard because you know, and just you, you know, it's just easier, man. I mean, depending on what level you're going to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's where um, you saw that story of that dude that was told to basically take me out. Yeah. Remember the video I sent you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, how did? Yeah. How did that go? 
Tell me about that, man. So basically, um, this dude was next to me. And when you're in lockdown and solitary confinement, I was I know you're 23 to one, but us was more like 48 to one. You know, yeah, well, so, yeah one. sometimes they wouldn't let us out for a couple of days to shower. So, yeah, it was. Yeah. But basically, depending on who was working and if they were short of yeah. staff or not, it would be 23 and one. Yeah. So basically what that means is is they're going to give this cell number one. They're going to give him an hour at five in the morning. Six in the morning, he locks it down. Cell number two comes out six to seven, and it goes on. And by the time it hits the whole unit, the whole pod, it could be two days later yeah. before it comes back to my turn again. So this was complete solitary lockdown. Um, it was just uh, all the all the crazies, shot callers. I'm sure you had. I'm sure in lockdown too, you got pedophiles there. You have rapists there too. Oh yeah. I mean, whoever can't be in general population, you know, yeah, for whatever for sure. reason. But they had this dude next to me, and he was he was a fully functioning homeboy. You know what I mean? And so we just start talking. You need know, to talk through the vent. You talk through the door. When he came out for his time, he would come to my cell and talk to me, and and back and forth. And um, he he showed me. He is actually the guy that taught me how to draw because I learned I started drawing in there because it gets boring in there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you have to program. You have to program in solitary. If you don't program in solitary, you will go insane. Yeah, you got you got to come up with some kind of routine. You have to, yeah. you have to, you know? So, um, so he's, he's befriending me. And then he starts asking me because he knew I was a Christian. So we start talking about God and start talking about different subjects about the Bible. And maybe after a month, he finally tells me, he goes, David, he goes, uh, I need to tell you something, man. And I was like, well, what's going on? He goes, I just, I want to apologize. I'm sorry. I'm like, what are you sorry for? And he goes, he goes, man, I, I got a wheel. And a wheel is like a little tiny note with micro writing. Like a little scroll. Oh. Yeah, a little kite. Yeah, a little kite. They call okay. them wheelers, you know. And he goes, he goes, and basically, he goes, they found out you're here and that you're not functioning, that you're a Christian. He goes, and basically, they want me to take you out. They want me to rig my door that, because he's next to me. So he's the first to go out and shower and use the phones. So they're trying to, he was trying to figure out a way how, he would lock his door, but it really wouldn't lock. That way, when I would come out next, he would do something. Yeah. He, he admitted this to me, you know, and he goes, I'm just, he goes, I'm real sorry, man, because um, I had plans all this time to figure out a way how to do something to you. He goes, but he goes, this Jesus you're talking about, man. He goes, I want to accept Christ too. You know, and I'm just like, it, it was just crazy, you know, because that, and that's the thing for me about Christ, man, is that the goodness of God overpowers darkness. Yeah. And here he was operating in the power of darkness because, I mean, murder and, and, and that, that's darkness. Yeah. And here I am with light. Yeah. And, and that light penetrated that darkness, man. And he ended up accepting Christ. And he and I told him, do you realize what this is, what's going to happen now? He goes, well, they're going to have to hit both of us now. <laughs> That's crazy, you know, like, man. That's an amazing became, story. That's yeah, he, amazing testimony, man. Yeah, he became a Christian. He had never had a visit for a long time. He was actually in prison. He was back in county just fighting something, and then he was going to go back to prison, and he hadn't, hadn't had a visit, and my mom and dad, my dad pulled him out of a visit, and my mom pulled me out, and he was able to get a visit. My dad was able, because my dad's a Christian too, and he was able to share with him about Christ too. And this dude, man, was so thankful. My parents sent him a Bible, mailed the Bible to him. And uh, and I, I don't know where he's at now, you know. I don't know if he's still in. I don't know if he's out. To be honest with you, I'm bad with names. Me and too. I'm racking my head trying to remember his name so I can figure out where he's at. Yeah, me too, man. I, and like uh, one of my friends who's doing a lot of time for killing his own parents. He was a really good guy. I couldn't remember his name for nothing. And finally I remembered it and I actually talked to him now to this day. So it's, well, it's hard to, uh, cause there's a lot of people I wish I could get a hold of man yeah. now and see how yeah. they're doing and maybe help them out. Cause I knew they were going to have a rough time getting out, but I'm horrible with names, but, yeah, uh, man. yeah. So that's well, an amazing that. story, man. You know, yeah, so, uh, I mean, an OG puts a green light on your freaking head and you're a freaking assassin. Yeah. Turns his life to Christ instead. Yeah. That's you know, unbelievable. Um, I was there. So then I was there for 
a year, 11 and a half months in solitary. So I had 15 months in Sacramento County, 11 months there. So that's like two years, you know? Yeah. And then finally the marshals pick me up. They take me to Travis Air Force Base and get a, we get on Con Air. Um, we don't know where we're going because the feds, they can send you anywhere in the 50 states. Yeah. You know, I'm freaking out because I got kids, I got a family, and I'm like, man, don't send me to Florida or some far, you know, the other side of the, you know, far, you know? And um, so basically I get on Con Air and it's there where they start telling us where we're going. And where I landed was Terminal Island uh, in, in Long Beach, County, in, down by Los Angeles. Well, that's all right. You came off on that one a little bit. Yeah. Terminal Island ain't too bad. It's it's It was about a six, seven hour drive for my family. But I mean, that's not impossible. And uh, that's where I started my time. It's it's It was a medium. And when I went, it was a low, but they said it functioned as a low medium because it still had gun towers. Because uh -huh. federal prison, the lows don't have gun towers, yeah. don't have that. But Terminal Island did because it had always been a medium. Uh, but when I, it was, there was just recently a riot when I hit and um, they bumped it, they sh shipped everybody out and they made it a low. Okay. So um, I ended up starting my time there and I was there and it was there where, this is crazy, right? Because you know I'm from up north. Yeah. So another story, man. <laughs> hey, I'm here, man. Let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So because of who I was, not only because of where I grew up, but because of the status, because of my music, man, my music was everywhere. Yeah. And because of that and because of the guys I was arrested with, you know, so I hit the yard and the first thing I do, man, I was dying to have fellowship with the Christian brother because I'm in solitary. I mean, I, I was just, I was like, man, Lord, just, you know, I just want one brother to fellow, one brother to bounce ideas off of, talk to, you know, so I hit the yard. It, uh, I hate to I stop like, you, but I hate to stop yeah. you, man. But that's one thing a lot of people don't understand when you are truly in depth with and connected with God. You just want to feed and feed and feed your soul with more and more of it. It's like an addiction and you just it feels good to be around someone yeah. to feed off of each other. And and, and that's an, that's another feeling that, uh, man, when I turned my life to Christ, it was just like. I couldn't, I, it's, I just wanted to keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on feeding my soul with words of wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the word of God, man. It's, it's an amazing thing, but, uh, yeah, keep yeah. on going, my so, friend. So then, uh, um, as soon as I get there by this time, I'm already two years into Christ. I'm yeah. already like, I'm, 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 my mind has changed. You know what I mean? My, my outlook, my, my, my perspective on life, my perspective on the North and South thing. I mean, two years in the Bible is a long time, you know? So I hit uh, I hit my unit, and as you already know, people say, where are you from? Yeah. You know? And I said, I'm a Christian, man. They're like, yeah, but where are you from? You know, I said, it doesn't even matter, man. I'm serving God. You know, so they were just like, what's, what's up with this dude, you know? Yeah. They, I, I'm thinking, now that I look back, I'm thinking, they're, this dude's trying to hide behind something. Yeah. But then I, I meet this Christian brother, Right away, like within, because oh, because they heard that I said I was a Christian, so then they got somebody that they respected as a Christian, and he he came to me, you know. He goes, hey, he goes, uh, he goes, you're a believer. I said, yeah, man. So we started talking, and um, so then he goes, man, I got some brothers I want you to meet, and I said, well, first of all, I said, where where are the Northerners at here? And he goes, is there any here? Because I'm in L.A., man. You know what I mean? This is in Long Beach. Yeah. And uh, so he goes, well, yeah, he goes, uh, there's there's a small group. There's like 15, 15 of you guys. Damn, you know? that's you small. And, yeah, because he goes, um, there's about 200 plus outsiders here, man. He goes, I said, well, I need to talk to these guys. Because the last thing I want to do is hit a yard as a Christian. And these dudes find out and be like, was he hiding from us? What's he hiding? You know what I mean? Yeah, so you gotta I want to nip this thing at the butt. You know yeah. what I mean? So. I, I go to I, I go out to the yard, put my stuff away. They give me my locker. They give me everything. And I go and I make a beeline to them, and I and I walk up to them. They're they're all grouped up. And I said, "Hey guys," I said, "I just want to let you know I hit the yard, man." And they're like, "Who are you?" I said, "David Rocha." And they're like, "Who you go by?" I said, "Dino." And they knew exactly who I was. 
And they're like, oh, what's up, homie? You know what I mean? Because they knew about this huge case. I mean, this is, everybody knew about this case, especially them, you know? And I said, oh, no, man. And then, then they're like, how you doing? You need something? I said, oh, hold on, hold on. I said, uh, I said, with all respect, man, I said, I'm, I'm hitting this yard as a Christian. And I don't know what that means, but whatever it means, I'm coming here as a Christian. So, you know, I was having some issues in Sacramento because I was a Christian. So if you guys are going to do something, just, just do it now. Yeah. And it, they're just looking at me like, what's wrong with this dude, you know? Yeah. And uh, so basically one of the dudes was like, listen, bro, he goes, this, this, is, this is not a medium or high. If it was, we might have an issue here. But if that's the way you want to go, then be about it, but do it for real. He goes, but um, do you realize they're going to find out who you are and you're here in L.A.? And when they find out who you are, you're on your own. You know, he goes, so don't come to us, man. Don't come to us. And I said, and I'm like, well, I'm not alone. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? I said, man, I got God and every angel on my side. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. And then, like I said, man, I'm two years in the word of God. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're in the zone. <laughs> exactly. So they're like, all right, man. You know, I wish you the best. You know, you got no problem with us. You got no beef with us. You, I mean, you're, you, we know, we know you fought your case. You know, there ain't no crazy paperwork on you or nothing. So you're basically walking away on your own. Yeah. You know? And and that's what I did, man. Um, and within that day, I met other Christian brothers. And within three months, I was preaching on the yard once a week. Amazing. You know? Yeah, I was preaching in the yard, got in tight with the chaplain. The chaplain never let inmate, inmates preach on Sunday sermon. And after about maybe a year, he let me preach. That was a huge deal to me. Yeah. It'd be like like some big church inviting me to preach. And it's like, here's a chaplain telling me I could preach. And, and that was like, it was an honor at that time, you know? Yeah. And um, so I, I just, um, you know, did my time there. Well, was in, in, in the feds, there's a thing called RDAP, which is a drug program. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you complete an RDAP, it's a nine month program. It's, you have your own pod. It's basically a residential program that when you do your nine month program, it knocks 12 months off your time. Mm, that's a nice program. Oh, man. It's, it, dude, there's a long list of people trying to get in this thing. You know, this is like, this is what I'm talking about, man. God is so good. Like, he just puts things in place, you know? So I get in this pro I get in this program because this this federal prison happened to offer it because not every federal prison has it. So you got a long list of people in prisons that don't have RDAP trying to get transferred to a prison that does do RDAP. Yeah. And here I land in a prison that has RDAP. So it's I get crazy in how things work out like that, isn't it? Yeah, the man. Lord really so, works in mysterious ways, man. Yeah, it's crazy, you know. So I, I do the residential program. And uh, not, as soon as I graduate, there's a little graduation, the, the warden's there and all these people, I graduate and it knocks 12 months, knocks my eight year sentence into a seven year sentence. Just like that, bam. Amazing, you know, my release date gets changed. And then I, um, because at that point, my points were, were, my points were already camp ready already. I, I would just write up, because there's a point system on what level of prison you go to. You know, I'm, is that how it is with you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just for me committing a violent charge at the age of 17 or well, 18 is what they put it down as boosted my points level dramatically, four. you know, and yeah. they sent me to a level four. And, yeah. uh, and simply just because like, people don't understand your age, just your age alone committing a yeah. felony will give you a lot of points because yeah. they consider young guys to be the most wildest ones of them all. So they will and tell they you. are. Yeah, they are. They are. I try to tell people yeah. that all the time, too. Them young yeah. bucks are wild as hell, especially when they're affiliated, man, and they get sent yeah. to some kind of orders. They don't think twice. They just yeah. do it, you know? Yeah. And, and I was I was 32 years old at the time when I got sentenced. So by this time, I'm 34. Um, even then, because it was a drug charge, you know what I mean? I had a drug charge, but because of the RICO, it, it, I wasn't camp eligible at first, you know, so it put me up to a low 
And then I, by this time, by the time I graduated, I had enough points to get to camp. I put a transfer. Camp was only an hour away from home. That's nice. You know? So um, I was able to, to transfer out of there after almost two years or a year and a half, or some of there, boom, did that program a few months more made it to camp, got to camp, and I finished my last two, two years and three months at, at federal camp. Hmm. Uh, and that was, that was nice. Yeah, that sounds There good. was no barbed wire. <laughs> that definitely that makes you feel good. Definitely makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah. So camp, um, it's crazy, you know, um, in the sense of, of there's people jumping the fences, you know, leaving at night. Oh, there's, man. It was well, crazy. We, we, hey, look. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to have you on the show again, man, because, you know, uh, seven, eight years worth of prison time, I'm sure you got some stories to tell. And yeah. uh, just jumping over a fence at a camp, that sounds absolutely... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I want to have you back on the show again. And uh, if you don't mind, go ahead, because you do have a YouTube channel. I would yeah. like for anybody that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, man, this guy, he really does speak the word. He does live streams, preaching as well sometimes. I was in there. I didn't I didn't leave a comment or anything, but I was in there watching the other day when you went live. Yeah. Uh, if you can, uh, leave your information. I'm going to leave it in the uh, comment section and in the description as well, but go ahead and tell people what, uh, you know, whatever kind of social media you might have or whatever the case is. Yeah, well, yeah my YouTube channel is David Rocha, my name. Okay. Uh, D A V I D R O C H A, uh, or you can look up if you like. Look up House of Rest. That's the name of the church. We're in Modesto, so we didn't even mention that I pastor a church now. Oh man! So you you pastor the whole church. You're the head yeah. pastor. Yeah, Amazing, yeah. I pastor man. a church. I I uh, planted it one year after I got out. I got out in 2010. Started the church in 2011 in my basement. It is now a church building with about 120 seats. It fills up every Sunday. Um, our website is www.houseofrestchurch.com. On that website, you can find our YouTube videos, our Bible studies. We have uh, books. I released I released this book. This is a friend of mine's. God's Fingerprints. I think, hey, I think I I've heard that. that book before, man. I did uh, Miss of My Confusion is a book now. It's on paperback, ebook, audio. Um, and I'm releasing my story next month, actually. And now, I man, if you could do some when I when I'm ready with that, that'd be awesome, man. If you could help hey, me out, I'm here with you, man. Yeah. And I might need your help because I'm in the process of writing a book my damn self. So maybe yeah, you can help me out with whole, a little I input. Art, I did the artwork, all the typesetting, all the editing, everything, man. Oh man, that that's gonna uh, save you a lot of money in the long run if you did all yeah, that, yeah. you know. So uh, I mean, our website, we have shirts. We have you know some shirts on there. Um, like I'm wearing one of them. That's nice. You know, we do shirts. There, everything's on the website. We we did a movie. I did a Christian movie that I put out free on YouTube. It's a full feature film H in HD. That's unbelievable, man. That's on the website also. Uh, we have music. I have done some Christian songs since I gotten out. Uh -huh. And there's some other Christian rappers that I've helped out. That's on the website, too. We have music videos on our channel. We have preachings on our channel, Bible studies. I just released a music video two weeks ago with... Uh, uh, a couple from our church that he was in the rap group I was in. And he's serving God too now. Amazing, man. Yeah. So we're, we're just, you know, we're movies and books and t-shirts. Just trying to do it, man. Just trying to push that message out there. You know, that's, that's all we can do, man. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, that's all he wants us to do, you know? Yeah. But, uh, if you can, man, when we end this call, send me all the links or whatever. And, yeah. and of course I got the YouTube, but, websites and whatever else you might have send it to me an email so that i can pin it in the comment section and in the description for people to check out what are you gonna call what are you gonna call this video i don't know probably uh i don't know something along the lines of green light <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh something you know some something along those lines it's gonna be it's gonna I, be a good one i can tell i can tell right now it's probably gonna get a good amount of views man uh yeah and I, have a I feeling. do want to say, man, I appreciate you and your channel. I kind of stumbled across it. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of prison videos. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've seen a few, and I can only watch, like, digest, like, a couple minutes, and then I'm just like, I don't know, just 
That's how some people are, man. I can't watch them either, to tell you the truth. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, sometimes I'm like, damn, I don't, I don't see how people can sit here and watch this stuff on a regular basis. But a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that watch my content really haven't even been to prison, you know? They, yeah. Oh, they really? Just, they just want to know what it's like for their family yeah. or, uh, you know, I hear that more than anything. It seems as though it's people just yeah. want to know what's going on in there for their family. And yeah. Well, I, some of the other, some of the other channels, it almost feels like they're trying to like that. You know how when people do the scared straight? Yeah. Those inmates don't act like that in prison. They're acting like that in front of these kids. Man, I say that all the time, man. I say it yeah. all the time. When the camera goes into prison, them dudes act totally different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I noticed different about your channel. And I didn't even know you're a Christian, man. I just like the content. I, I like the way your channel is. And other people, and it's funny, I did watch your video when you said you went to, when you got kicked out of the prison pod, the Christian pod. <laughs> Dude, God, man. I I met Christian because here's the difference, man. Because I mean, I was wholehearted in, in God, but yeah. some of these guys, the difference is a lot of them are wholehearted into religion. Yeah, exactly. Structure yeah. and rules and regulations, yeah. one hundred to the T. But I'm telling you, see, that's why I tried to say, I you know, I believe in Christ and I, I let it be known, but yeah. at the same time, I don't preach it down people's throats. I try to shoot it in their ear because a lot of people they're not here for you know your channel is different you're, you're preaching and stuff they know what they're getting themselves into yeah. but me but on the other I'm hand like, i'm not sitting here preaching to you yeah yeah see that's great but see on the other hand my channel has nothing to do with religious beliefs but at the same time i try to spit a little something here and there and people believe yeah. it or not they're like boom you know it really hits them yeah. and and it doesn't push the ones that don't want to hear away at the same time. You know what I mean? Uh, there's different ways to go about being, um, I guess you could say, what is the word? People that go out and preach the good word. Uh, yeah. Uh, I like can't, uh, preach the gospel? Or? Yeah. I can't remember the word for it, but there's yeah. different ways to approach certain situations, man. And I just try to do it the most respectful way for the people that don't even want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. I love the Lord with all my heart, and that's that's really what really matters, you know, is yeah. the love, you know, and God knows our hearts, and it's and not always me, about with the rules and regulations and. and yeah, you know. exactly. You know, for me, it wasn't it wasn't the fear of hell that brought me to Christ. It was the fact that He would want somebody like me, somebody rotten and wicked like me. That's what brought me, man. Was His yeah. love. You know, what I mean, it just blew me away, and it still does. You know, the love, and because man. of that. That's why people, I believe that's why people watch our channel. We got so far for, for being a preaching channel. We have over a little over 4,000 subscribers. That's good, man. You know, that's and, good. and um, the church fills up. We got viewers on Facebook, on YouTube. And I think because they sense that difference, because I'm not trying to be this religious dude. I'm just, I'm just sharing this goodness that, that was shared with me. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and I'm a down to earth dude. And, a lot of people come to the church and they say, man, I don't feel judged here. Yeah. I'm like, well, how can you feel judged if, if the pastor's an ex-con? You know what I mean? Yeah. How, how, who am I to judge you? So all those walls drop when people come. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a beautiful thing, you know, and, and I, I'd like to extend that hand out to people because there might be people that watch you that maybe they're interested in God, but there's no way they're going to walk in that church because they know they're going to be looked down upon. Yeah. And this is an alternative, man. Come to our channel because the way I am with you is, is the way I preach, is the way I teach, is the way I am. For sure, man. You know? And there ain't no judgment, man. I'm just here to share a message. That's it. Well, I believe uh, you're going to get uh, quite a bit of subscribers within the next day or so from this video. Uh, that's when just are what... you putting it out? Huh? When are you putting it out? I'm going to put it out today, man. I'm going to edit it when we're done with this and then uh, it's going out. It's going out All right. to the mainstream. So be on lookout for that in a couple, few hours. Uh, but look, man, I appreciate you coming on the show, and I hope to have you back on here. And I'm gonna drop all the links to the stuff that you gave me. And don't forget to send me that in the email. Yeah, I'll do it right now. And yeah. uh, but yeah, man, you're doing God's work, and I salute to you for that, man. And I wish you the best of luck out there, man. I hope your church grows and keep Thank doing you. what you do. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, buddy. Well, you take care out there. All right. Yeah, let's do this again. Hey, for sure, buddy. Take it easy, All man. Right.